Oh, hey guys. I was just in the Vans Air Force forums reading over Jack from Titusville, Florida's posting on May 12th. He writes here, uh, I was wondering if anyone can recommend a brand of cooling fan that moves a lot of air and also has the same footprint as the ones called out for in the plans. My fans work okay. And I'm not having any heat overheat issues. I just want a little more airflow. Well, that's a very good question. I don't know. Um, I don't know. So uh, over the past uh, weekend or so, uh, a couple other people chimed in. My buddy Brent up here in New Jersey also chimed in uh, with some information. And um, the short of it is that the fans that come with the kit are 80 millimeter fans. They're standard computer fans, uh, for better or worse. And they move about 40 CFM of, of air. And the model number is down below in the description, but it's OD8025-12HSS. Uh, most likely Chinese-made fans are all from China. Um, some are better than others. So I went on to uh, Newegg and uh, did some searching around, and I found a couple fans that might, uh, that might meet these qualifications here. 80-millimeter um, fans, 12-volt fans. They do have 24-volt fans if you have a 24-volt system, if you're not an RV12 person. Um, the stock fans that come with the kit are 240 milliamps each, moving 40 CFM. And the ones I found on Newegg are 340 milliamps each at 60 CFM. So you get 50% more airflow. Um, you have to pay, I would say, about 50% more in power. But the extra uh, roughly 100 milliamps per fan should be okay. So I went ahead and I ordered two of these. And we're going to go down to the hangar and uh, do a quick install. Well, we're back at the hangar here. Let's take a look at my brand new fans, and while you're watching this, you can go ahead and give the bell and the subscribe button a little tappy tap action down below. Don't smash that button on your phone, you will break your phone. Uh, this is the B Gears B Blaster 80mm 2 ball bearing fan. We're going to go ahead and remove our co pilot RV12 uh, G3X here. We're gonna. Prepare to fast forward! Prepare to fast forward! Fast forward! Fast forwarding, sir! fast forward through this because you've probably done this a million times already even if you haven't built your RV12 I'm sure you've already been behind the instrument panel as you can see here I have replaced my cap head screws I had a rusting problem with them so I found some uh, zinc coated screws from McMaster uh, car that you can uh, replace them with and I'll have a link to those below if you have the same problem I, I don't know maybe that was just me So as you can see here, the co-pilot fan, as well as a pilot side fan, is held in just by two 5 uh, nuts. So get your little ratchet out, and underneath you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, this is kind of self-explanatory, so let's fast forward through this. Overall, the whole project should take about half an hour at most. All right, so normally the ground for the fan is the ring terminal, which is grounded, grounded through the bolt to the, the metal underneath the instrument panel. And the positive is normally a D sub uh, pin. Um, I had a problem when I was building my RV12, uh, so I've replaced it with a spade connector. As you can see here, this is the original fan running at 12 volts, which is its, its rated voltage and it's looking at 150 milliamps or 1.8 watts so we're going to get some baselines here now you have to remember too that when your engine is running and the alternator is running you're going to be outputting 14.1 volts so we're also going to be testing both fans the old and the new uh, with 14.1 volts and we'll see what the amperage is on that so i'm going to go ahead right now and crank up the voltage to 14.1 this is a great little voltage uh, unit, um, power supply, very uh, fine adjustments on it. You can limit it through voltage or through amperage. It's about $100 from Amazon. 
And at 14.1 volts, we're looking at 190 milliamps. So it's well below the rated spec uh, that was advertised for that fan. Now here's the new fan, the B Gears B Blaster fan. That's a weird, weird name. So we're just shy of 12 volts here. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit to 12. And here we're looking at about 260 milliamps or for the pair of fans, it's gonna be 520 milliamps, ha half an amp basically. But this is at 12 volts. Try to be somewhat careful when I'm adjusting this voltage here. I don't want to burn out the fan before I even install it. And at 14.1 volts, we're looking at 310 milliamps or 620. Now, here's an interesting test. We're going to see how close I can move the original fan to this box before it blows over. This is going to measure or get some sense of the CFM and, and what that really means in terms of you know real life. So we're looking at 9.5 inches away from the box for the original fan. For the new fan here, which is 60 CFM, 50% more, it's looking like 17 and a half inches. So there's definitely more air being brought through that fan. So like I said before, uh, my original fa the fan that I had installed, I have a spade connector instead. You might have the D-sub pins. Um, you can replace it with a spade connector if you don't have extra pins. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to be replacing this fan too often. The new fan is a ball bearing fan, which should last longer and should be a little bit more durable than the sleeve bearing fan. Sleeve bearing fans are they're cheap, and for something like a computer where the fan doesn't move around too much, uh, you'll get some, some good lifetime out of it. In an aircraft or a, a car that's moving around, uh, you'll, you know, three different axes, I think a, a ball bearing fan is a little is a more appropriate choice here. Now, if you're going to buy this fan, there, this is a three-wire fan. Normally, computers, computer fans have three wires, three or four. So there's going to be a positive, a negative, and then a uh, RPM sensing wire coming out. So I've cut that one off. I'm not going to use that just yet. I think as a second project, I'm going to devise some electronic gizmo that's going to interpret the signal from that third wire and send it to the G3X and maybe show an alarm or something when the fan dies or goes below a certain RPM. Now, you can't get the polarity of this fan wrong. If you get the polarity of these two wires wrong, you will immediately burn this fan out. Uh, don't ask me how I know this. So the negative uh, lead has a black strip going down it. So I suggest that you strip one of these at a time and you put the end on each of these wires one at a time so you don't get these confused. Now if you buy your own fans, um, your fans might not have a black strip on pin number one, uh, but the, the typical pin assignments for these fans is pin one is ground, pin two is plus 12 volts, and pin three is the fan sense. If you want to mess with that fan sense wire on your own time, um, just know that you get two pulses for every rotation of the fan. So if you're into electronics, you can use that as a starting point. Uh, I've crimped on this negative terminal here, my ring, new ring terminal. Gave it a little tug, make sure it's secure. And now I'm going to strip the plus 12 volt wire here. Uh, these wires are very thin, so I'm stripping a little bit more than I normally would off of these wires. And then folding it over just to, to double the, the thickness of those wires uh, as I insert them into their respective connectors. I also like to put the, the terminal in the crimping tool first with uh, light pressure, have it ready to go, and then go ahead and insert the wire and do the full crimp. If you want to change out your connectors to these spade connectors, I got these at the local AutoZone, I think. Uh, they're pretty cheap. They're typically used in cars. Uh, I like these in particular because they have the insulation on the, uh, the outside of them on both the female and male terminals. Looks like we're all set here. 
All right, so this is just the reverse of what we did. Screw goes through the bottom, washer goes on, ring terminal goes on. Now I'm trying to, I have to do this with one hand. My other hand is holding that screw up. There we go, nut goes on. I'm just gonna give it a couple rotations just to secure it so that screw doesn't fall out. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the bolt in the back here. Going to connect the positive wire. And of course, you guys have seen this before, so we will fast forward. Don't tighten these too much. You will bend the plastic ears of those fans. Make sure you also get the orientation of the fan correct. So before you ratchet down on those, uh, turn the fans on, make sure they're blowing the right way. On the right side, it should be blowing down. And on the left side, it should be blowing up. Good evening. Infidel. Okay, haha. Ha. Let's turn the master on and check that fan. Yep, it's blowing down. And on the other side, we'll make sure that the fan is pointed the opposite way. Okay, so just to wrap things up here, uh, this particular fan that I found, uh, again, uses 50% more power, uh, about 100 milliamps more each or 200 quarter of an amp more total which i think is fine for the rv12 is and more than likely fine for the original or legacy as they call it rv12 um, now i don't really know if you will realize the benefits because once you install that fan there's those uh those holes that were cut out in the bottom of the instrument panel um, so that's going to restrict the airflow anyway I have to think that if a fan moves more CFM, even though it's restricted the same way um, with you know X number of holes in that in the bottom of the instrument panel there, um, it's going to try and move more air through those holes. Uh, but I don't have any test equipment to, to really see if uh, you do get a benefit. Um, I suppose if somebody wants to throw some temperature sensors behind the panel and do a test before and after, may maybe that would be a good test. Um, but there's so many variables involved, I, I don't know uh, if you'll ever get some, some solid, solid answers. Uh, but all in all, you know, these fans were $15 each plus you know, a couple bucks for shipping. Um, and it was fun just to you know, do a little small improvement to the plane, especially something that only takes half an hour. Uh, and, and again, it, these screws I'm screwing in here on these, instrument, on these G3Xs, I don't know if I got a bad batch of screws from vans that, that seem to rust all the time or what, um, but I should just said to heck with it and I got these zinc coated steel cap head screws. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll put the, uh, the link to those below in case other people have the same problem. Uh, and again, when you guys do this on the pilot side, it's the exact same, uh, same thing. So I'm gonna close the canopy and give you a before and after uh, with these fans and I'm going to switch back and forth quickly so you can maybe hear the difference Well, this is what happens when you break one of the one of these fans. Yeah, I, I connected the wires the wrong way. Don't do that. He's dead, Jim.